morning children. Today we move on to the second lesson of the reader, Long Walk to Freedom by Nelson Mandela. Before we go on to the chapter, I would just like to bring back memories and discuss with you all how India went through a long freedom struggle. India remained under the British rule for almost three centuries and you all are familiar with great names like Raj Guru, Bhagat Singh and Mahatma Gandhi, um, Patel and uh, Vallabhai Patel and many other uh, great heroes and sons of the soil who sacrificed their lives for the freedom of the country. So similarly, it was not only in India but in every part of uh, the world that many countries had to go through this freedom struggle to liberate themselves. A similar civil war was fought in the United States also between the northern states and the southern states of the United States of America, which was called a civil war. And that was to liberate the people who were enslaved. Slavery was practiced there and people were discriminated on those accounts. So a civil war was fought from 1861 to 1865 against this uh, discrimination. So the chapter that we're going to do today uh, is actually taken from the autobiography of Nelson Mandela and written, it was first published in 1994. And the lesson reveals the various phases of Mandela's life, all the sacrifices and the toil that he went through against apartheid. Now apartheid means discrimination, segregation, and this was racial discrimination between the blacks and the whites or the whites and the non-whites as we say. People resented it greatly because there was a completely uh, different setup for the blacks and a different setup for the whites. So as a result, Nelson Mandela was totally against it and he paid a very, very heavy price and he was in prison for about 27 years and then he uh, actually fought for this freedom when he uh, headed the African National Congress and uh, there were democratic elections held and finally this practice was given up. Though today we still find traces here and there things do keep coming up like in India also, we have uh, discrimination in society because basically you all know how India was divided on the basis of uh, labor. The Brahmanas were looking after the religious uh, aspects, the Kshatriyas after the, uh, were the warriors, the fighters, then the Vaishyas looked after the business and the Shudras did the menial jobs. Slowly this became hereditary and India also witnessed a very, very strong caste system, discrimination. So social discrimination and then finally when the constitution was made of course all of this was tried to do away with but still we find traces of all these things but above all these great sons of the soil did a lot. So Nelson Mandela also recalls his birth, his happy moments and he termed freedom in different manners at different stages. As a child for him, freedom meant running around in the fields, having fun with his friends. Then as a young student or as a youngster, it meant to him to be able to develop his potential, to get married, to have a family and settle on. Then comes the next phase. But then he thought that these were all very, very transitory, very, very temporary. And his final focus was on political freedom giving freedom to all his countrymen against this racial segregation. And once they attained political freedom, his next target was to liberate his people from poverty, hunger, strife, violence and various other things. And he felt that all those people who were undergoing this terrible pain and suffering was his suffering. Nelson Mandela was born um, in July 1918, 18 July 1918, and ever since that time he showed signs of doing something for his nation. When he talks about segregation and discrimination, 
he is very magnanimous magnanimous in the sense that he had nothing against the whites he felt that the oppressor and the oppressed are on the same footing why because the person oppressing is also under or chained by hatred and so the oppressor himself was oppressed so he was very magnanimous he had no ill will against the whites and he said that nobody is born hating we can be taught to love so nobody is born hating means that hatred can be done away with and love can be taught and so uh, slowly and gradually we can bring people down onto the level of uniting and becoming one as a nation so he was very magnanimous on that account the second part that he talks about is liberation that is political liberation he attained by becoming the president of the african national congress and making it a democratic nation his next target was to alleviate to do away with all poverty hunger strife so that everybody could move around peacefully and happily it's so truly said that depths of oppression gives you heights of character and this is very apt for nelson mandela as he believed that courage is not the absence of fear but the quality of conquering fear the triumph over fear and it was this courage which actually helped him and goaded him on and made him an anti apartheid revolutionary and finally to become the first black president of south africa may 10 1994 was a red letter day red letter day means an important day a historic that is important date and also an historical date because it created history when nelson mandela became the first black president of south africa dignitaries from all over the world flew in to be a part of this swearing in ceremony it was a great moment for nelson mandela and for all the blacks all over the world for for this victory and for this great moment where they could be liberated and lead an independent and free life freedom is very very important to all of us and we must never forget the sacrifices made by the sons of the soil the great leaders who laid down their lives without even batting an eyelid or thinking about themselves when they placed the country before themselves and gave us this free air to breathe and to live a life of our own a life of freedom and independence so let's let not their sacrifice go waste we should always remember that we must always be united and live in harmony and peace let there be brotherhood and love all around this is what all the leaders of the world are today also trying to advocate that we should all live together as a global family let's all be global citizens an important quote by john f kennedy is so apt here ask not what your country can do for you ask what you can do for your country hope you like the video kindly share it with the others also and please subscribe to my channel thank you for watching